All right, first I gotta test to see if this works. Yes, it does. All right, okay. So, uh, uh, two things we're gonna talk about today would be, first one will be the uh, foolproofing, um, foolproofing uh, input, how to use CN to write a foolproof data entry. Number two, operator overloading. These are the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, regarding the quiz, I was all out during the weekend and canceled, the class got canceled. I don't know. Did your class didn't cancel, did it? Yeah. So anyway, so all weekend I was gone, so that's why the quiz didn't go up. Okay, quiz number three is going to go up, and you're going to see the instructions over there, so don't worry about it. You're going to do it. Um, we have another Monday being a holiday next week. So it's possible that I'm going to do a recording and ask you to watch for that day so we don't fall behind. Okay? So you're going to have it in your own time. Take a look at it. I'll put the notes up. Uh, like that, we can have the session going, but you have to uh, actually really watch that because it's a very critical time. You need to actually know it. Um, I see half of the class is missing, I hope. Um, are going to come soon. But anyways, um, talking about uh, C in and how to work with it, uh, I want you to first realize that when I say C in, I mean I stream. When I say C in, it means I stream. So remember everything that I'm teaching you right now. Anything that is made up of I stream works the exact same way. That's the beautiful thing about object orientation. I teach you how CN works. Later on, any type of object that you see is a descendant of ice stream will work in an identical way. Okay, just remember that. So what I'm gonna tell you, it's CN and all the children of ice stream. CN is ice stream by itself, but in future when you learn other stuff that are working with ice stream, they work the exact same way. The very first thing I need to tell you about CN is CN being shy. And I told you that CN will not talk to you if something goes wrong. Okay? So if I have something like integer num over here, and I'll go CN, uh, enter an int. If I do something like this, and I go CN num, Okay, and I have that many nums, C and nums over here. As soon as I run the program, when it runs, if I enter the first one correctly, the second one will be red, and the third one, and the fourth one, and the fifth one, and the sixth. So it keeps going like that if everything is good, which is very fine. But if I run the program, and I put over here ABC, nothing will work which means the first one is going to fail. And when it fails, C and says, you gave me something I couldn't read. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Done. None of, the, the rest of it will not work. OK? Remember that. This is extremely important to know. OK? Extremely important to know. Now, to demonstrate it better, instead of having series of C ins like that, what I can do over here is this, write something like mm, for integer, integer i set to 0, i less than, say, 4 and i, i plus plus. i less than 4, you're right. OK. I don't have my coffee yet. <laughs> OK, see out, and I'm going to say red num and l. So I'm reading four times, simple and straightforward, OK? So when I do something like this, and I'll go over here 10, and I can go 20, 30, and 40, and everything is good. So I read that four times, and everything's fine. But if I run it again now, and I'll put over here 10, everything's skipped, OK? It's not going to pause. It's not going to stop. The next thing you need to realize over here that is extremely important is that the extraction operator, as you see over here, 
extraction operators read the polymorphic extraction operator when i say polymorphic what does it mean what is the meaning of polymorphic should i bring the microphone <laughs> person who said no is going to receive it <laughs> okay when i say something is polymorphic what does it what is the meaning of polymorphic Poly. What is the meaning of poly? Uh, multiple. Poly, multiple, many. So many shapes. Morph is? Many forms. Many shapes, many forms. Thank you. So the extraction operator out of ice stream is a polymorphic. You can give it to the gentleman over there. <laughs> the, extract, the, the extraction part, uh, operator uh, in, uh, for, for ice stream uh, works with many different things. But there's that one common thing it has is that it skips leading spaces which means if you start anything with white space it will ignore it until it hits something to read which means if i start the program now it, these are the things that we need to remember if i go space and i enter 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 tab 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 and i'll go 10 it reads 10. it skips all the spaces until it hits something that it can read. Then it checks and sees if it can actually read it successfully or not. Are you okay with this? Okay, because of this fact, if I enter the number like this, 20, and I'll go next, and I hit enter, the rest of them is, uh, is going to fail. Because the first one reads the 20 and stops, and now the rest of the empty space over there, the rest of the information is in the buffer. And it hits the next C in. The next C in skips the spaces, reaches to next. It cannot read it as an integer. Therefore, it fails, and everything after that fails. OK? So we need to understand, if C in can't read it, it fails, and it won't talk to you anymore. OK, three people, go. Then, then it's so. That's a good question. So, what if I actually have something like this? I want to I wanna read four of them, right? I go 10, 20, 30, and 40. Okay? It reads it back to back. It's as if, it's as if you have written something like this. It's the exact same thing as writing if I have over here integer A, B, a, B, C, and D, and I write C in A, B, C, and D. It's the same thing. I'm saying read in that one, the next one, the next one, the next one. Oh, so if I if if you put spaces, it, it acts like that. Because it's a because we have to remember that this polymorphic extraction operator returns the reference of C in after it's done when the first one is read. It re this returns C in, so it becomes C in and B. And that C in and B will read the B and return another C in, and it keeps going forward. Are we okay with this? Okay. So anyways, just keep this, these facts in mind. These are important stuff that we need to know. Now, how to apologize and how to clear the, the keyboard so when it's garbage in it, I can start with a fresh keyboard. We're going to come to it in a second. So we understand C in is a shy object. If it can't read, it goes into a failure state. Are we okay with this? Okay. So in here, what I can do right after this, I can say if C in, that's it, nothing else. Magic. C in is an object. How do I put it for an if statement? We don't care. We'll learn soon. But you can do so just something like that. That means, hey, C in, are you good? If that's the, that's the thing, then in here I'm going to go C out, read OK. In here I'm going to go else, C out, last, read, failed. OK, I can actually test and see if C in was successful or not. Now if I run the program, I go 10, it's going to say read OK, read 10. Okay, now if I put over here 10, all failed. It can't read anything. 
it says last one read. Because last one failed, I'm not going to read anything. Last fail, last fail. So it's in a failed state. Are we okay with this? So you can detect if it is or not. Obviously, it's not only that magical thing. You can actually call a member function of it. So instead of writing this, instead of writing something like this, I can reverse the, the thing that I have written. I can say if cn dot fail, now everything's reverse. If that's more descriptive, you can use that. There is no problem with that. You can say if cn failed, this is what happens. So you can actually see it. And that means the last thing was, uh, was in a failure state. Are we okay with this? <laughs> because they won't talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Why it doesn't, so for it to wait for you to prompt to get something, it has to be in a good state. If it's not in a good state, you say read, it won't even look at you and talk to you, it's as if you didn't call anything. The function exits with no action. And that's how seeing works. If seeing is in a good mood, it's going to answer you. Other than that, you say seeing, won't even answer. As if you didn't even call it, you didn't even talk to it. You good? Kind of telepathic stuff happening here. All right, so. So, so that's the thing, that point that I wanted to make. Are we okay down to this point? Well, we get to that. We'll get to that. So I just wanted to tell you about CN and how it won't respond to you. So we know, well, I'm going to teach you how to apologize and how to flush the thing so everything goes to garbage in keyboard so you can start fresh. We'll get to that. But first, we need to understand that CN will fail and will not talk to you if something goes wrong. OK? That was the message. OK? So the other one is going to be shy cn.cpp. OK? So we have that. Next one. Next thing we need to understand is how CN ignores stuff. What does it mean when I say ignore something? OK? So when you say CN dot ignore, CN ignores one character. That's what it does. So as you see over here, I am I have two, two things just to show you that anything that CN reads is as character values. And then inside its belly, it converts it to integers and stuff. So when you say read int and you put one, two, three, CN reads one, two, three. And if everything's acceptable, it digests it into 123. Okay? So if I say ignore one character, it ignores the first one and reads the rest. Showing you this, if I actually do something like this right now, so yeah. So if I go control F5 in here, if I say over here 123, it's going to read 23 because it ignored one thing. Got it? If I run it, if I say over here A123, no problem. This is not a bad integer because A will be ignored and 234 is a valid integer. So it will work. Are we okay? Yes. Then obviously A is going to be, I'll run it. Obviously A is going to be ignored. Now B wants to be read as an integer. Can't, it fails. So if I go A, B, one, two, three, then it fails. We okay? So that's ignoring one character.
How can you ignore after? I know, but how can you ignore after? The whole point of ignoring is ignore before reading. Ignore after has a point. But I want to teach you how does ignore works. So I have to read after to show you what is ignored. If I put it after that, it's pointless, isn't it? So, no, 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 no. So, yeah, that, that's the golden rule of console entry. Console entry, the only key that is a special key that triggers the computer to pass all the information to your program is the entry key. That happens to have the ASCII code of 10, backslash n. So the only key in standard input entry that triggers reading is backslash n. But it's enter. But enter is no different with A and B and C. The only difference is that when you put A, B, C, you don't trigger the passage of information to your program, but enter does it too. So enter does two things. It passes everything and also passes its ASCII code that is backslash it. Are we OK? So ignore, like all uh, functionalities of an object-oriented pro program, is polymorphic. What is the meaning of polymorphic? Can have many shapes, many shapes, OK? <laughs> many shapes. I'm going to ask this over and over. It's going to be many shapes. So, so in here, I'm going to put over here abc ignore cn dot ignore.cpp you can ignore many characters not only one so we can actually do something like this and now now that I showed you I'm reading an integer I'm gonna do it with characters because I'm not interested in failure I'm just interested in ignores functionality. You understand that it doesn't matter what I read. Everything is first character and then, OK? So I can actually do something like this. <clears throat> now, ignoring three characters, you can say ignore three. OK? You can say ignore three. So when I say ignore three, it's going to ignore three characters. Now, I want to show you something. Seeing that ignore actually starts reading, which means if you only have an ignore, the program's going to pause. Take a look. If I actually run the program, it comes over here, and it actually gets to ignore. See what happens? It actually waits for the info. Because the keyboard is empty, it is looking forward to ignore things. Nothing is over there to ignore, get ignored, right? So now I'm going to put over here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K and I hit enter, now the first three is ignored. What is left in keyboard is D, E, F, G, J, B, L, I, K, and then, right? So now it actually reads the rest. Oops, wrong button. It reads the rest and prints it. And therefore, you're going to have D, E, F, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Are we OK with this? So three. Three things were ignored, right? Now, showing you a common mistake. Showing you a common mistake that students do. Students think, if I put over here backslash n, it means ignore backslash n. That's not the case, OK? If I write over here, I'm just going to ignore. Write it again over here. Actually, that's tricky. That's tricky. I'll tell you what's tricky. Actually, let's first do it. I'm going to do another ignore three characters. OK? So ignore three characters over there. Show it and ignore another three characters. Let's see what happens. OK? So to, to show you what is tricky, when I'm saying tricky, what does it mean? So when I run the program, I say th ignore three characters. And I'll go uh, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, OK? And DEF. And I hit enter over here. Obviously, DEF is red, correct? 
Now I'm going to ignore another three. So I'll go A, B, C, D, E, F. That's a beautiful walkthrough for a quiz. And I hit enter. What happened? How come two characters were ignored? The last enter. Because extraction operator stops at enter, it doesn't read the enter. The enter remains in keyboard. So, thank you. Uh, Sahar, uh, 1% for midterm. That was good. Okay, so, so what happens over here is this. So when I actually go like this and I keep going forward, it reads three characters, then reads the EF, but hitting enter adds an enter at the end. The, extra the extraction operator reads the rest of it, that is DEF, and stops at new line. We print it. Now I have new line and the rest, right? Usually we don't notice this because extraction operator skips all the spaces until it hits something. That's why we don't notice it. But ignore doesn't care about that. Ignore ignores anything that comes in. So if I write over here, so if I write over here, one, two, three, A, B, C, A, B, C will be read. It skips three spaces. It doesn't care if it's space or not. Ignore, ignores characters no matter what. Do we understand it? And then the next one that is coming, the, the previous backslash n will be the first thing that is ignored and two more. Are we okay now to this point? All right. Now the point I wanted to make was this. This ignoring backslash n characters, I specifically write it that way to tell you what does it mean. If I say ignore backslash n, what happens? So if I run it, everybody thinks that it's going to ignore backslash n. So a, b, c, d, e, f, g. So it reads that one, and it says ignoring. Oh, that didn't work. It actually shows the backslash n. I put back. That was my, my bad. Lack of IPC 144 knowledge. Yeah. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, ignoring backslash and characters. I'm going to put over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I hit enter. What happened? It skipped nine characters. Because backslashes ASCII code is 10. So you're telling it to ignore 10 characters, not backslash n. There is no ignore that accepts a character. And doesn't make sense, ignore backslash n. What does it mean? How do I know it's backslash n? If I know by it's backslash n, I just say ignore. It's going to ignore it. Why do I have to mention it's backslash n? You follow what I'm saying? So yeah. Let's not, let's, we understand what happened, right? No. So that's ignore with one, uh, ignore with number, ignoring numbers. So C, D, C in, ignore N characters. Yes. Okay. There is no such thing as characters in C language. It's, it was a big lie in IPC 144. Everybody said we have characters. There is no such thing as characters. Character is essentially a small integer. Do we agree with that? So when I put capital A in, an, in, a, in a character, I'm actually putting 60 in there. Are you okay with this? Because ignore, ignores next overload, accepts an integer at the beginning, and there is no ignore that accepts a character. When you started with a character, compiler says, I need an integer. You left a small integer over there for me. It is still an integer. I can use it. So uses your character as an integer, which means it's ASCII code, which means backslash n is 10, because 10 is the ASCII code. So it skips 10 characters.
the next overload of ignore says the next overload of ignore says ignore these many characters or up to and including something whichever comes first so if I write something like this and I run the program if I write A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X, whatever, it's going to ignore four characters. Are we okay with this? But if X comes before four, if X comes before four, now if I say A, B, X, D, E, F, G, H, I, it ignores everything up to x including the x and then stops are we okay with this that's the last overload of ignore so ignore has three overloads if you don't say anything it means ignore one character if you put an integer it means ignore these many characters if you put an integer and a uh, character it means ignore these many uh, these many characters or this or up to and including this character whichever comes first okay now this is the nature this yes yes yeah, it ignores it, it ignores it's, I'll show you so I'm gonna put over here let's put a little bit more so I'm gonna put over here like eight of them okay and now if I write something like this I can go one two three four a B X whatever as you see, it ignores the spaces and then goes over there. If I, if I, you were saying? That, I know the word is ignore to mention the statement that you told me, but that English word doesn't apply to this command. This command, it means start ignoring and then, or get the information and then. So this essentially, they should have called it flush, but they call it ignore, okay? So the ignore you're talking about is a trick we're going to make, we're going to do. The, the ignore is, the ignore you are saying is the standard extraction operator. Standard extraction operator reads up to a space and stops. So if you want to read first name and last name, all you need to do is go C in, extract into name, extract into last name. The first one reads up to white space, space stops. The other one skips the rest and goes. I'll show it to you in two seconds. Okay. So, so this is the nature of flushing keyboard. Hmm? Re repeat this okay so this ignore ignores these many characters or up to and including the character as a delimiter as a terminator whichever comes first so if x comes before eight up to x is ignored not eight characters but if x goes after eight then eight characters is ignored not x does that make sense all right, so that when I say that is the nature of fl flushing, <laughs> okay, flushing, <laughs> okay, flushing, flushing keyboard. So now, let's see uh, how do we flush with this. So um, D C N A A Igor. Anyways, you know it's ignore. Ignore C C C and ignore and uh, num or up to k. Okay. I think we have two D's. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll show you exactly. So what happens is this. Let's say, let's say I want to read an integer, and after that integer, I want to read a name. 
Okay. Um, oh, not this one. So let's say I want to read an integer. And after that, I want to read the name. So what I will do is this. I'm going to write in, uh, C, uh, C out int. Okay. C in num. Then I'm going to say C in dot ignore. 10,000 characters and new line. Right? I'm saying either ignore 10,000 characters or new line, whichever comes first. Obviously, new line is going to come first. Nobody's going to enter 10,000 characters, right? So that 10,000 is nothing. So essentially, I'm telling to ignore characters until you hit backslash n, including the backslash n. My dear, backslash n is 10 characters when it comes as first argument. The second argument is a character. It's not a number. Okay, so this is, this is, these are the, because I said, because once I said characters ASCII code is 10, it doesn't mean that from now on, backslash is 10. We're not going to, that's not the, so the, this is ignore. Okay, C in dot ignore actually is I stream ignore integer len. That's one. The other one is I stream. Ig ignore, which is the same as the same as I stream ignore one. Okay? And the other one is I stream ignore integer len and character delimiter. Okay? So I'm saying whichever comes first. Do we understand this now? Yes. Yes. Yes, and that's going to be a long thing to go because I think 92 is A. B, C, D, E, F, G, multiple, you know, how many characters going to ignore? <laughs> so. Yeah, because the single one is only an integer. Because, as I mentioned, there is no such thing as characters in C language. Because C language doesn't understand characters, they created a function and they, they created this standard that whenever I want to print this integer as a character, please print its shape, not the number. That's why if you, have a, if you had a printf percent %c and 60, it would have printed A for you. Remember that in IPC? That was, it was, they taught you that, right? Okay, so that's what it is. So it, it doesn't matter, okay? So what I'm saying is that C out character 60 prints an A. Oh, where is the A? Oh, it was, mm. what? Am I compiling the right thing? Where is my A? No, no, 65, 65, 65, 65. Shoot, I forgot. It's 65. 60 is less than. <laughs> 65, I think. 65, is it? Yes, 65 is it. All right? So we understand. All right? So I kind of fooled the, I fooled the extraction operator's overload by putting character cast of 65. So I'm saying cast 65 to a character, so I'm fooling the extraction operator that this is not an integer, it's a character. Therefore, the, the code is printed, the, the, the ASCII code, the, the shape of the ASCII code 65 is printed. Are we okay? Okay, now, what is flushing? Flushing is essentially 
he didn't understand. He's, and he's shocked why you are not asking the question. No. <laughs> because... <laughs> I didn't understand the question. You two understood perfectly. I did not. So you have a function mm -hmm. that adds two numbers uh -huh. and returns. Returns a what? The answer. The answer. No, no. What is the answer's type? The integer? The integer? Yeah, okay, beautiful. Integer. Uh -huh. So in instead of, if I want to call the function, instead of doing, say, e equals this function and the argument, mm -hmm. I could just do c out the function and the argument. Right. Of course, yes. Oh, yes, of course. That's, again, nature of C. Anything that returns a value becomes its value after execution. Mm -hmm. That's, again, nature of C. Are we okay down to this point? Okay, the next thing I wanted to say was flush. So in here now I can say C in uh, name. Oh, C out name. And now I can go see in SDR. OK? So the good thing about it is that I know that when integer is read, worst case scenario, I only have one integer in the keyboard, correct? So ignore, wants to ignore 100,000 characters, but the first one is backslash n, just ignores that one. And worst case scenario is the User do a stupid thing and enter so many things. It doesn't make any difference. So if I run this program, I can enter 20 and then fardad. It works perfectly. Oh, I forgot to print the fardad. Hello and L. Hello is the Okay. So I can do this. I can enter. 210 and fardad works perfectly or I can say and and hit enter again everything's ignored up to backslash in now I'm going to say over here fardad it says hello fardad so that's essentially flushing the keyboard. So whenever, when we are dealing, when we understand how to apologize from C in, if somebody enters something bad to C in and C in goes to a fail state, I can say if C in fail, first I'm going to say apologize, then I'm going to say C in dot ignore 100,000 and backslash in, which means whatever garbage you couldn't read, I'm going to flush it, now I start reading again. So this essentially becomes flushing the keyboard. That's why we don't have a keyboard flush, because this is keyboard flush. Keyboard flush up to and including backslash it. Are we okay? So for, to your words, if I actually put over here, it is exactly the same. It is still ignoring up to backslash n because now I have a character as second thing and I'm passing an integer. And compiler says, I didn't ask for an integer, I asked for a character. Oh, so let me use this as an ASCII code for that. Therefore, it's backslash n. It's the same thing. It's both ways, right? Compiler always tries to cast. So if I do something like this, it still works the same way. Right? Questions? Yes. Yeah, if you want to flush. If you want to flush. But if you really want to skip 20 characters, then put 20. <laughs> but if you want to flush, you put some unrealistically big number to kind of make it an endless loop. Up until you hit the backslash in, because you know backslash in is going to come. It is impossible not to. 
Nobody can enter anything without an enter at the end, right? That's how it is. Okay. That's ignore. Now, let's talk about apologizing and see how we're going to do it. So, uh, actually, no, one more thing. One more thing before we go. Um, so, this is, I had two Ds by mistake. So, this is E. And this becomes F flushing. Okay, so the next thing that you need to know is how to get stuff, okay? So, ignoring that you mentioned, if I have something like this, If I am 100% sure that nobody's, no one's name is Mary space Joe, right? <laughs> if they don't have such a name, I can read it like this, okay? Uh, for example, something like, uh, I'm going to go see, uh, see out. First name, and I have to do like this, first name, last name. To, sh to make sure that they understand it has to be whole. It cannot be anything in the middle. Now I can go C and F name. F name and L name. Hello. F name and space. And last name, L name. Okay, so when I actually run this, I can actually go over here. First name, I'm gonna go over here, Fred, and Tab, and Soleil. So it's gonna be Fred Soleil because the nature of extraction operator is read something, skip all the leading spaces. For the second one, skips everything. Okay, but if somebody is Homer J. Simpson, then I'm in trouble because it's going to be Homer J. Simpson is not read and left, is left in keyboard. Do you understand? Yeah, so again, extraction operator reads one token. And white space is its delimiter. It reads and stops, reads and stops. You cannot use it for regular, unless you really want to read one, one word at a time. Extraction operator is no use for reading statements. That's why we have these functions. EFG. Extracting uh, strings. Okay, and uh, the next thing we have is the function get. The function get can work in many different ways. It's kind of like ignore when you think about it. But the difference between get and ignore is that, actually no, get is not like ignore. No, so get has, so I can write something like this. I can write, so I, I can have character A or CH, okay? And I can say ch is equal to cn.get. That reads one single character. C out ch. Obviously, I can ignore afterwards because actually let's let's do the ignore. So I'm gonna get one character and then I'm gonna say cn.ignore. I'm gonna flush. Because I wanna test the one character thingy. Or you can use the c in with a character reference. So you can actually say uh, uh, cn.get, and you put a over here. Oh, what a? ch. Where did a come from? 
CH. It works the exact same way. So let's actually do something like this. C out. Enter a character. So these two both work perfectly. So in here, I'm going to say A. It reads an A. Everything's flushed after. It reads A, one character, and flushes all whatever. That it happens to be one backslash N now. And then reads another one. But this one reads the exact same thing using the reference. You'll see later on what is it good for. But it's two different ways of calling it. So in here, I'm going to put X, and it reads X. So in two different ways, you can read a single character using the get function. Are we OK? So this is C in dot get and C in dot get ch dot cpp. What C in has something that is much better at it actually reads a string. So in here, I can have something like this. I can actually have a string. Let me just bring it over here and show it to you. I can write the C in dot get like this. So I can have a, a string, and I can say C in get str4. It means, this essentially means, get three characters or backslash n, whichever comes first. Up to backslash n, not including. It's not going to eat the backslash n. The backslash n remains. So th this is equivalent to this one. They're both the same. OK? So if I do something like this and I run it, you will see that I can put over here A, B, and I hit enter. A, B is red. Or I can go, oh, reading the rest. The reason is that uh, when I put A, B, the backslash N is not skipped. OK, so anyways, not important. Uh, it's, oh, reading the rest I didn't have. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So when I say up to four, because it didn't reach backslash n, it will not stop. It needs to, for it to come. Okay? So let me show you what happens. So, yeah. So the next thing I, I'm going to do over here, I'm going to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you hit enter. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, that is a three character, is red, and the rest is left in keyboard. You see that? D, E, F, G. So that's seeing.get. If you say, I want this many, it will read that one. Now, you can actually do this. I can put over here, let's say, 10. Oh, 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 oh. stop, stop. I can put 10, and I'm going to put 10 over here. And now in here, I can say, Jin Li, right? And uh, whatever after. As you see, it reads all the spaces, too. So space is not a delimiter for, uh, for get. Get accepts a delimiter whatever you want, OK? Whatever you want the delimiter to be, it reads everything. So whenever you want to get spaces too, you can use this one. But again, remember, it's not going to eat the delimiter. The delimiter remains in the keyboard. As you see, H is exactly here. So W is red. And H is there. It didn't eat the. It didn't eat anything after. It goes. Oh, let's actually do this. Is this what you're talking about? Because get. That was the next thing I wanted to say. If get, if you have, this is something freaky about the get functions for C in. In C++, in C language, we always had one extra 
character left for the null, yeah, yeah. It, it, it includes that. Oh. So it says you said 10, it means you have one for null termination. Oh. So you can, when you put, when you put 10 over here, you can comfortably have in a string of 10 over here, making sure it's not going to exceed its size. Because when you say 10, it reads a string that fits in 10 characters, which means not char no one, uh, nine characters and null termination. Okay? So this nine cares and null termination. Okay? Okay, so this is uh, I C in the get. The next one is when you use a delimiter for C in. Okay, so if I say go up to X, X could be backslash N if you want to. But when you write something like this, what happens is this. Oh, I, I compiled the previous one by mistake. Just a second. So when I do this, it actually goes up to, so if I, if I can go over here, A, B, C, X, D, E, F, G, H, I, um, H, I, and if I do like this, you will see ABC is red, it stops at X, but X remains in keyboard, it doesn't eat it, which means the next reading will pick up the X. Are we okay? It's not like ignore. Ignore ignores up to and including the delimiter. Here, the delimiter is not extracted. Okay? All right. So that's EFG. Don't worry, it's almost done. Uh, G H uh, G uh, I J dash C in dot get dot C P P again. Oh, G in. Seriously. Anyways, we'll rename that afterwards. The next thing is get line. Get line is exactly like, so when I write something, get line is exactly like uh, get. The difference is that it eats the delimiter. Okay? There are two differences. Number one, it eats the delimiter. That's one. Number two, if it doesn't reach the delimiter, by the time it reaches the limit, it will fail the C in. So if you don't, if it doesn't get to backslash in by the end of it, because you are telling it, read a line. Read line essentially, if you don't put the X, is backslash in. You know that. That's the, the default parameter exactly. So when you say read line, it expects a line to come in to that length, up to that length. If it reaches the length, backslash is not there, mission not accomplished. I couldn't read the line. It fails the C in. Okay? So the only difference is that, so it works exactly like, if I say over here, C in dot get line, uh, str and 81, I'm just going to comment it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to comment it. I'm going to say read up to and including backslash n uh, up to 81, 81 cares. That is again 80 plus 1 null. Okay. Uh, and eat the new line, which is backslash n. Okay, so that's essentially that C and get line means. It's a perfect thing to read a line or a perfectly perfect thing to read a record. Let's say you have a record that is comma separated. 
You want to read the record up to next comma. You keep going get line, comma. So it reads the first record. As soon as it hits the comma, it stops, eats the comma, the next one will be ready. So things like that. It's a delimited read. The difference is that if I write over here, one, two, three, four, X, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, I'm good. As you see, the, I put a G for some reason. As you see, it eats the X and it's at it, right? Be okay with this? Now, the next one, take a look at this. If I go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, X, 6, 7, 8, 9, then it fails. It reads that because I said 5 is 4 with an all, right? So it reads that one, but because it didn't get to X by the fifth delimiter, by the fifth length, it fails the scene and it won't read anymore. So you can actually check and see if the read was what, what it was promised. Okay? So these are the functionalities. We're going to use this as we are going through. Are we okay down to this point? Hmm? You didn't understand? X is supposed, okay, let's put it like this. First, let me save this. K C in dot get line. Let's say I want to read a UPC code that is four characters. And it has to be four characters. Therefore, what I need to do over here, say SDR UPC, and it's four characters, correct? Right? And the record that I'm reading has a comma separated thing. So in here, I'm going to say re read the UPC and stop at a comma. I want to make sure that UPC is four or less. If it's more than that, it's an incorrect UPC. I have to let the customer know the file is corrupted or something. Okay, I have invalid information coming in. If I do it like this, now I can actually say over here, If cn.fail, see out invalid UPC. So now when I run the program, it re if it's one, two, three, four, comma, product name, it is perfectly good. It reads it. But if I have something like this, one, two, three, four, whatever, like something like that, comma, and product name, now, why didn't it fail? fail. It should fail. Cn, get line. One, two, three, four, five, comma, A, B, C. Invalid UPC. Why didn't the other one fail? What did I do? Yeah, why didn't the other one fail? The other one failed and I didn't notice? Well, anyways, it fails. I don't know why it didn't fail. What did I type over there? Anybody remembers? I just want to know why, because it has so one, two, and then a lot of spaces, and then what? Two, and then whatever. I don't know. Anyways, but it fits. I don't know what I did last time. I'll, I'll watch the recording later <laughs> to see what I did, and I'll try to replicate it. But that's what it is. So essentially, if it was a get only, it wouldn't have failed, and it wouldn't extract the, the, the thing. That's all. That's the only difference. Okay. So let me first fix this two gins for some reason.
Okay. So, knowing this, now I want to learn how to apologize and therefore write uh, uh, a foolproof uh, get int, something that receives an integer. Okay? So, what do I do? It's actually quite simple. So, I'm going to write int get num. So this get num of mine is supposed to receive a num number, okay? So I'm going to go integer num, and I'm going to say return num. That's, that's my objective, correct? Receive the thing. So what do I do? I'm going to create some kind of a Boolean thing. I'm going to call it done. That's my habit. I'll do that because I don't want to think about conditions. I create a flag, and I write do. While not done. Then I'll decide what that flag is supposed to be. So I'm not going to think of what kind of a combination of thing I want to write. When it's not done, I'm going to leave it at not done. When it's done, I'm going to call it true and it's going to end. Easy. Okay? Now let's read. So what do I do? First, I have to read the number, right? C in num. That reads the number. Okay? Now, what I need to do over here is to see if it failed or not, right? So I'm going to say if c in dot fail, that means I'm big doo doo. They entered something that is not an integer, right? So the very first thing I'm going to do, c error, is exactly like c out. So we have three objects that are i stream c log, c error, and c out. c out is to print, c error is to print error messages. The good thing is that if c out is in a fail state, c error still works. You can show your error messages. So it's a good idea to print your messages on C error. It's the error messages. It's the same thing as C out. Okay? So I'm going to say C error. I'm going to say bad integer. Try again. Now I have to apologize to C in. Say, I apologize. Please. Become active again. I noticed that you had a bad day. So I'm going to say cn dot clear. That is to apologize. To clear cn failure. Cn fail. OK? Now that it's clear, I need to get rid of the garbage, right? Because they entered something I couldn't read. Now I'm going to flush. I'm going to go cn dot ignore I know how to do that okay and I'm good to go so if something like this happens if something like this happens it goes back and reads it so if I enter something garbage it's not gonna work so it's not gonna have any problem so I'm gonna write a tester for it okay now if I run the program didn't I write? Oh, get int, get num. Uh, uh, int is better because that's an integer. <laughs> okay? So now if I run the program, it's going to tell me enter a number. And if I enter something garbage, it's going to tell me bad integer. Try again. Now I'm going to put 20. It's going to... What the hell? What did I do wrong? Thank you. 1% for midterm. All right, so, so that's what you need to do. So in here, if it fails, that's the case. Otherwise, done is true. Ooh, right? If I can type it. So now if I run it, hopefully, now I'm going to put garbage, bad integer. Now I'm going to put 10. It's going to tell me the number is 10, right? But that's not still done. We can do much more, OK? So if it's down to here, it means they entered an integer, but they might have garbage after. Maybe they wrote 10 is the number, <laughs> right? OK, so for that, what do I do? There is a thing over here. So in here, it means first was an int, but what about the rest? I, I want only one integer, and anything after, I want to stop. If it's only an integer, what should it end with? Backslash n. So what do I need to do? I need to take a peek 
and see if the next character that is coming in is, uh, is backslash n. That capability is in CN. You can tell to CN, look at the next character in the keyboard, but don't read it. Just take a look at it. Don't read it. You can do that. Peek, but don't read. That's why it's called peek. So I can say if cn.peak is not equal backslash n, <laughs> then I have to say c out. Please enter only an integer. And go cn.ignore. Uh, very smart people. Actually, you don't know who created C++? He's still alive. He's a very smart man. OK. <clears throat> and then in here, I'm going to say else done is true. Right? So now if I run the program, 10 is the number. It's going to say, please enter only an integer and nothing else. OK, now I'm going to say 10. Now it's going to say number is 10. OK? Doing that, I know that when, it, when everything is successful, when everything is successful, I still have one backslash in after the number, right? I can get rid of that too. Because for peak, you have to parse it yourself. You have to peak, it gives you a character. You have to see if character is between 1 and 0. What if it's a double? Then there's a dot at the beginning. No, I'm saying for the bad integer, try again. That's what I'm saying. When you do peak, it doesn't give you an integer. It gives you a character. It gives you the character 1. It gives you the ASCII code of character that is coming in. You have to validate that manually to see if that's an integer. It means the ASCII code is between the ASCII code of 0 and ASCII code of 9. If that's the case, then you're OK to read. It's doing it already for you. Why bother? You know what I mean? So why instead of pushing the throttle on a car, I don't go out and just push it? It will still go, right? No, they built it inside. It's working. Right? Are we good? All right. OK, so that's that. So now I would say after this, I am, I am OK to say what? I am OK to say cn.ignore. I know it's only one character. I could actually put just this. Because I know when I get in here, it is only one integer, other, uh, one backslash n, right? Correct? But looking at this, I see that no matter what, ignore is called. If it's bad integer, I have to call ignore. If it's OK integer, but the rest is garbage, I have to call ignore. And when everything is good at the end, I have to call. So in here, even it's if, like, let's put it this way. Even when the done is true, I have to call ignore, correct? In any case, I'm calling ignore, right? So why don't I just put one at the end and be done with it? And I'm just going to put over here, and I say ignore. So I remove this, and I remove this, right? So I validate. I say bad, yada, yada, clear. I come over here. It jumps out over here, ignores all the garbage, goes back up. It comes over here, it peaks it, it's an integer, but afterwards I have garbage. It comes over here, ignores goes up. If everything is good, I have one integer. This ignore removes it. So it works. And here is your foolproof integer entry. You can do that for double, you can do that. Like, and you can, all these validations don't have to be failure. You can have a phone number, check to see, make sure it's nine digits. You can. Do stuff like that and write foolproof entry for whatever you want. Simple as that. It's a social insurance number, whatever. I don't know. You want to check the validity to make sure that this checksum is something, to make sure that 
it's at least these many characters long or whatever, like a three-digit number. You have to make sure it's, it's more than 100 and less than 999, things like that. So you're saying, why didn't they add that in C++? OK, they add, this is a very good question. And the answer is that I want this function to be this. I don't like that. I like this function to be this. Int get int, int min, int max. Right? I want it to be this. And in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Int num, and I'm going to say, uh, bool done is false, and in here I'm going to say do num is set to get int, because I already have the get int, right? Then in here I'm going to say if num is great is less than min, or num is greater than max, right? Max, 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 max. Then I'm going to say see out uh, number out of range range, and I'm going to put some message, whatever. I don't want to go through it. And, and, and do something like this. And in here, I'm going to say while uh, not done. And in here, I'm going to say else done is true. Correct? Why they don't add that one? And then I was said, no, I don't want that. I want to have this one too. I want to have int, get int, int min, int max, and constant character pointer prompt. I want to actually show the message beforehand. Why do I have to? So I keep writing where it's going to end. Where it is going to end, every single person is going to come up with another function that says, why don't they include that one? No, not at all. For some people, getting is not important at all. They are only dealing with hexadecimal numbers. The thing is that they give you the tool to make the good thing yourself. You like it, what you do, you copy it. That's why I put the utils thing in here. I have these two functions. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take these two beautiful functions of mine, copy. I'm going to go over here in my utils.cpp, and I'm just going to paste it in there. And I'm going to get the prototypes and put it in utils.h. Now, there we go. Now it's in C++. And how long it took me? Five minutes to write it? So you mean for five minutes of my work, the entire world must have an extra function in their library? No. They give you the tools. You build up your own toolbox. OK? I know you're very sad that it doesn't. Like, it's got to say, why don't you just say it and it write the program for me? Like chat GPT. You like it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, it, like, that's not going to work, right? So there you go. So keep going and, and modify stuff and do whatever you want to do. And that's foolproof entry. Are we OK with this? G-I-J-K-L-M. And I'm going to say foolproof entry dot CPP. Done? Are we OK? Five minutes? Go back, we'll start operator overloading. So, uh, operators, okay? We have to understand how, what, 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 which category they fall into, and then after that, we're going to uh, show you how we can overload them. What is the meaning of overloading? Uh, you have uh, same functions, uh, same name of functions, but different. Thank you. Same name of functions, but different arguments. So remember, when I say overloading, that's what it means. OK? Now, please take a look. OK? Number one, when you are writing, first of all, the color is OK. You can see that back there, right? 
Okay. Can we see it over there? Not really. So probably I'll go with red. Okay. So the very first type of operator that we all know and we work with are binary operators. A binary operator works like this. So you have your operator. That's a general operator. When I write that, it means plus, minus, whatever operator that you've seen. That operator accepts two operands, okay, left and right. So we call this left operand, left operand, and I'll call this right operand, okay? The job of an operator is to accept these two arguments, the left operand and right operand, do whatever they are supposed to do, and return the value, okay? Whoever is receiving that value is going to receive it. That's what an operator looks like. So you, when you are saying 5 plus 6, the right operand is 6, the right, left operand is 5. The action of plus is to find the sum of 2. Therefore, 11 will be passed back. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with that? If I write over here, 5 minus 6, then minus's job is to reduce the value of this one by that one, and therefore the value that is returned is minus 1. Are we okay with that? Okay. We call these binary operators. Why? Because they have two arguments, two operands. What is the name of an argument of an operator? What did we call it? Operand. So when I say operand, it's essentially an argument of an operator, okay? An argument of an operator. Are we okay down to this point? So that's binary operators, okay? The next one is unary operator. So when I have a unary operator, okay? Unary operator works like this, okay? It means you pass something. It has one argument. What is the argument of an operator called? Operand. 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 Oh, everybody. Operand. Operand. Okay. Operand. Yes. Okay. So, all right. So, <laughs> I keep asking. Everybody's quiet. So it has one operand, which means it has one argument, and it does whatever it's supposed to be done to that. So minus 5, that means that positive 5 will be uh, negated, and minus 5 is returned. If I may have not 6. Not 6 means uh, not true. Essentially what happens, it returns 0, right? If I have not 0, it returns uh, 1. Are we, you are okay with that. So that's a urinary operator. So, let's say, for example, before we run the I plus plus, it's also a category like this. Pardon me? Uh, for example, I plus plus. Uh, that, that's the next one. Give me two seconds. Okay. Or the urinary operator that comes over here could be uh, plus plus uh, I. Okay? What is the difference between a regular operand and this operand, the plus plus operand, okay? The plus plus operand over here, what we call a side effect. It doesn't only return a value, but it changes the value of its operand too. So far, what we have written over here were all uh, no side effects. A and B remain the same after it's done, right? No side effect. But we have binary operators that have side effects. Like A plus equal B, right? That is still doing what it's supposed to be done. So if I have over, if A has the va, okay. So it decided that, oh, it shut down the system. That's why. The system is shut down. But anyways, so if A plus B is what we have, if, if A has 5 in it and B has 6 in it, then essentially what happens, what gets returned is 11, but also the value of A will be 11, all right? So this is a binary operator with side effect. Side effect. 
Are we okay with this? Okay. And this one is just a regular binary operator. Unary operators can have side effect too, as I mentioned. So I can go plus plus A. If A is 5, it returns 6, but that 5 will become 6. Right? No problem down to this point. So this is, so unary operators can have side effect too. So this is a unary operator. Plus side effect. Only two operators. This is math. Okay, actually, this is not math either. This is programming. Well, what I'm saying, this is math. This is math. These are not. The one that's math up in math, only one operator has side effect. Can anybody tell me what is that? In math, only one operator has side effect. No, modulus doesn't have side effect. It's equal sign. When you say A equals sets to B, okay, so it's the same thing as this one. If I say over here A is set to B, the job of A assignment is to get the content of B, put it in A, and then return the value. Right? So if this is 5, this is 10, this will be 10, and 10 is returned. Correct? Okay? But in C++, we have many operators that they have side effects, and you know exactly what they are. We have only one and only one unary operator that is postfix. Oh, sorry, only two. That's plus plus and minus minus. And that's an exception. Because of that, the way they are treated or, or overloaded and treated are as, as such, okay? So uh, when I write A++, plus plus, when I write A++, plus plus, and they act weird too. So if I have 5 over here, right, they actually return 6, but they return that 6 a little late, right? So, if, so what happens is that they return, if when I say A, actually they return 5, my apologies. They return 5, and then it becomes 6, right? So they, they are a little weird, too. But anyways, those are post-fix uh, unary operators. So we have binary operators, unary operators, binary operator with side effect, unary operator with side effect, and unary operators that are post-fix, and there are only two of them, plus, plus, and minus, minus. Are we okay with this? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, all these things have function uh, face too. So all the operators that you see, they have a function face, okay? Which I'm going to explain in two seconds, okay? So remember the things that I told you about operators and how they look like. So when I say this operator is binary, you know there are two operands, two things that are involved, right? If I say it's unary, you know there's one thing that is involved. If I say unary with side effect, it means the unary is actually changing the, the operand. When I say binary with side effect, it means that the operator is changing either the left or right operand. Are we okay with all this? All right. This is the unary that doesn't have side effect. No, this is a general one. This can have, if it's this, minus A. It doesn't have side effect. But if it is minus minus A, then it has side effect. So there are two different ones. This is a general shape of them. Are we okay? All right. Let it be. Doesn't matter. Now I have to turn this on and it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. All right, so we don't need this. Okay.
Remember the output that H we have written? Lights. It's the opposite. Let there be no light. <laughs> All right. I'm going to actually open a service call that the light over here is not right. I should be able to only turn off the front. It does it like it. Exact opposite, the other side. I don't know. So, uh, so let's come back to PRG. So uh, we created this uh, output thingy, and and we had a tester for it, right? Before we do anything, I just want to remind you of this very quickly. So we created. A tester program. Remember when we said it sucked? Remember that? <laughs> we created print, print, print to show all the prints. We did that, right? Actually, we have four minutes. Uh, so I think the rest is going to be continuing the next day. But in four minutes, can I do anything? Let me see if I can do something. So. I'm going to give you the very first, very first general uh, uh, type of um, operator overload that I can teach you. So uh, now we won't have time. In three minutes, I'm just going to leave you confused and. Uh, you'll come. It's, we have it on uh, Thursday, right? We have our lab on Thursday. So for late Thursday, first of all, I ask for all those people who don't see that they have those people with eagle eyes, go to the end. Okay, those people who can see well, go to the end. If you can't see, please sit up front. Okay, I need lots of real estate. If I make it extremely big, it's going to be difficult to follow. So I have to make it as small as possible without you being uncomfortable. Okay. So keep that in mind. We're going to pause it right at this thing. Next day, we're going to do operator overloading. Have a beautiful one. Yes. Pardon me? Yeah, those are the people who usually fail the subject. They come to the, they come to the lab because they just want to do the quiz. Okay. <laughs> you're making it online. Right? Pardon me? So you're making the quizzes online. Yeah, so this time the quiz is online, so probably those people won't come. Okay. <laughs> I'm not making the quizzes online. Just for us to catch up, because we have another cancellation coming up. That's why I don't want to use the class time for quiz. Yes, dear. <laughs> That's how rumors begin. <laughs> Give me, give me two seconds, give me two seconds.